Adam. The White Hair Master, Episode 10. Grandpa's Corpse. This all began from my far relative cousin's call. Her grandpa passed away a few days earlier. From the day he died, her family had experienced lots of unusual events. Once receiving her call, I came to see Adam, my psychic friend, the only one who could help her out. I messaged Adam right after the call. I called him my master. There was something at my cousin's house in my hometown, and I needed him to come to check out the next few days. That was an urgency, but Adam's reply drove me nuts. He was sick and unable to handle this time. That was weird to me. I could not believe that Adam could be sick. He was perfect and mighty. How could he get the flu or any kind of achy that made him unable to stand up? He was always healthy. I thought he must have wanted to avoid me, so I texted that I wanted to check him out, but he replied that he was just catching a light flu and didn't need me to come. I insisted that I wanted to see how bad his situation was and wanted him to text me his address. Right after receiving the address, I took a cab and went to his address instantly. I reached his place, but I was amazed after getting out of the car and saying goodbye to the driver. I thought I had been taken to the wrong place. I was jaw-dropping from what was in front of me. I have never imagined that Adam lived a luxurious life like that. I didn't know my friend, my master, that well. I tried to pull myself together. I thought he might be just live a security guy living there, but after I rang the bell and told the security guy my name as well as why I came there, the security guy opened the door and let me in. I had to accept the fact that Adam was a resident in the villa. I came after the security's instruction to Adam's place and rang the bell. That was my first time to rang a villa's bell, to be honest. After a while, Adam came to get the door, he indeed looked very sick. He asked me to come in and sit down. Once I entered the house, everything was so luxury so that I got another jaw dropped. Adam was coughing consecutively and asked me to sit down. I was shocked about Adam's living condition. That was far more my guess about him. I thought he was a poor lonely boy who lives in a small rented room. I have never thought that he could live in a huge luxury villa like that. I had to shout out to him, that was unbelievable, he was living at the top fancy villa in the city. Adam asked me to sit to his fancy cough and calm down first, then slowly told him what happened to my cousin's family which I nearly forgot about at that moment. So I sat down and told him about my cousin's situation, her grandpa has passed away a few days, and then her house had been haunted likely. Adam was confused and told me that he was sorry that he wasn't able to come with me. He was afraid that he could not recover well even in the next two or three days. He was in a terrible condition, that spiritual stuff needs a spirit of a healthy living man to sort out. It turned out very difficult for me because I have promised my cousin and who knows what would happen to her family if she received no help. I told Adam that her situation was running badly, her family needed his help badly. Adam could see my unstoppable will and determination. He took out a card under the table and gave me. He told me to come to see Jackson, Jackson's grave, clothes store owner and assured me that guy could help me out. I looked at the card he gave me in the hands, got a bit shivered. What a grave clothes store, there was Jackson in the card as the store owner. Once I heard the name Jackson, I doubted his abilities. I told Adam that if he was sure that Jackson could help my cousin? I didn't feel that he was a good psychic once I heard his name. But Adam told me that I should not worry. Jackson was a very excellent psychic, was way better than him. Adam told me that he needed sleep badly. I better left his villa and came to see Jackson then. Everything was very fast then, I still didn't catch the whole thing. But Adam had escorted me to his door and asked me to leave. Before I left, he gave me a penny and told me to keep it. I thought he was worried about me for not having enough pennies to take a bus, 
I told him that I could take a cab there. But he explained that Penny set aside once I saw Jackson, he told me to gave Jackson later then. I held the small penny on my palm. At that moment, I thought Adam was rich and how he gifted his colleagues a little penny, how stingy he was. But then, I realized that was merely a childish thought. I left his luxury villa area and took a cab to the Jackson store. I was very curious about Jackson the whole way. It looked like Adam very respected him. Jackson was a hilarious name and not like the kinda name of a responsible man. The taxi turned to a road, I could realize that I came very close to the city crematory. I went out of the taxi and found the store, as the written address in the card, from the outside, the store looked small, and nothing special I could tell, I could see the simple sign right there. I pushed the door and stepped inside, but there was no one there. I had to speak up, is there anyone in the house, is there Jackson inside? I went along the store, there was no light on in the store, just some through the gaps of the doors, which made the store got a weird dark vibe. There were a bunch of paper mannequins in different sizes, ages, and clothes. Those mannequins looked livingly, but they got no eyes, so I got a bit scared and annoyed. I looked at those mannequins and murmured why they got no eyes. What were the purposes of that? It's so weird, but out of the blue, there was a reply from behind. They would have eyes when they were in use. I was startled and turned back to see the one who was talking. I told Jackson what I came there for. I was looking for him, and he introduced me that he was Jackson. Initially, when I heard Jackson's name, I thought he must be an old man, but in front of me, that was a young and handsome man there, even though he got a long thin scar on his face. As Adam told me, I took the penny from my pocket out and gave the young man. I told him that Adam referred him to me and that I was Adam's friend. Jackson looked at the penny. Then, he murmured something bizarre, as if he talked to me, with the same first language as mine, but to be honest, I didn't get what he was talking about. That might be some secret psychical signs. Seeing my dumb face, Jackson furrowed his eyebrows. Then, disappointedly, he confirmed that if I came from the yellow point? I didn't understand what he was mentioning, so I shouted out to him I didn't get it. But he didn't answer. He sat on the chair and made a frame of the paper mannequin. He didn't give an eye on me, just stared at the bamboo stick in his hands. Anyhow, he spoke up to me, he told me that I shouldn't worry. Just sat down and told him what my concerns were and what happened. I took a chair nearby and sat next to him. I started to tell him what my cousin told me earlier through the phone. She was my cousin and married a faraway husband. Her grandpa had passed away a few days, so at our traditional funeral in my hometown, her family had to put her grandpa's coffin in the house for memorial a few days before they brand him to burial. My cousin was his favorite granddaughter. She had been raised by her grandpa because her parents' workplace was very far from the house. They weren't by her side when she was a child, so she was very close to him, and she had to take care of her grandpa's funeral. Fortunately, her grandpa got some close friend, Robert, who was reliable and helped my cousin out at the funeral. After days of busy works at the funeral, that particular night, my cousin was very depressed and tired. She dragged herself to the bed and passed out, despite her grandpa's coffin out there, and no one looked after her. After a few moments, she was frightened and woke up because she heard a loud noise out of the windows as if someone was jumping out there. She quickly came up close to the windows and asked who was that, and she startled when seeing a man standing outside the windows. That was her grandpa. My cousin pulled up the curtains lightly and looked outside again. She could see the man clearly out there. Surprisingly, that was her dear grandpa. She looked at him. He looked exactly like a zombie in the movie. His two hands were put up, and he was jumping around. She was scared to death and quickly hidden in the closet. 
She was unable to read the scene then. Did her grandpa die already? How he could wake up and jump around outside? After a while, she heard no noise, so she opened the closet a little and looked outside. She saw with her own eyes that her dead grandpa looked at her room through the gap at the window curtain. She was terrified, bent her body and tried to hold her breath, and kept it silent. And then, she passed out and drowned to the sleep, until the morning, she had been awakened up by the sunlight shined through the closet's door. She carefully put her head out of the closet and eyed out the windows. Once she was sure that there was no one out there, she carefully stepped outside of the closet. To ensure that she didn't dream about her grandpa last night, she ran to her grandpa's coffin place with her bare foot. She saw there was nothing move even an inch. She carefully stepped by the coffin. She was scared of the thought that she couldn't find her grandpa's body in the coffin. Fortunately, everything was fine. Her grandpa's dead body was still there, inside the coffin as is. That confused her so much, she wondered if she was paranoid or she was just too tired and got a dream. She eventually caught her grandpa's shoes while she was drowning in her thoughts. She recalled clearly that she put to her grandpa's coffin a new nice pair of shoes already, but right there, the shoes had been covered with mud. That proved what she had been through the night earlier was really happened, that was not her hallucination nor a dream. Her grandpa had been turning into a zombie and jumped around outside at night. She got a shiver down her spine, and out of the blue, there was someone slap on her shoulder from behind, she screamed aloud. Come to have a look, that was Robert, her grandpa's close friend. She faltered to Robert, he nearly scared the shit out of her. My cousin invited Robert into the house and told him what she had been through the night earlier. He advised her that she should stay inside the house at night, and he would find someone to help her out. My cousin didn't know what she should do then, so she gave Robert a thank. Robert told her not to go out of the house at night to stay out of danger. He would find her a psychic to sort things out. And the night after, her zombie grandpa once again woke up and jumped around outside her bedroom's windows. She was very scared and stayed till she rolled her body under the blanket and wished the night over quickly so that everything could be normal in the next morning. My cousin found out that her zombie grandpa had returned to his room as well. That room had been locked up, but she saw everything had messed up after that night. That was everything. Robert didn't find anyone who could help her. After days of being sleepless, my cousin had asked me and wanted me to ask Adam's help. Adam referred the man in front of me. I had told Jackson the whole thing. Jackson had done with his mannequin's frame at that moment. He clapped his hands a few times and told me we should come to my cousin's house to figure things out. When I was at the doorstep, I saw Jackson had brought a small bag on his bag. I looked at the bag and admired his creativity. The bag was like a small coffin. Jackson told me to be quick. Jackson was a busy man, so he suggested saving time, and the fastest way was driving there by his car. I agreed in no time. At the parking slot, seeing an old car, I thought that we weren't able to save any time with that car. But it turned out I misjudged him. The old car wasn't his car, but the fancy red car behind. I got another jaw-dropping. In the first 20 minutes in the car with him, I just focused on his supercar. I asked Jackson all about the car. How much was it? How about the performance? Because the car was like my dream to have one. But then I remembered the point and asked Jackson's ideas about my cousin's case. How we could trick and catch the zombie, my cousin's grandpa's corpse. Jackson gave me a light smile. He told me he didn't think that was a corpse. Jackson told me that my cousin's grandpa wasn't a corpse, which made me so surprised. I had heard she described that her grandpa had jumped around like a zombie in the movie. I asked him that what could my granduncle be? Jackson gave me a light sign. 
He looked drowned in his memories. He told me my cousin's case recalled him a cult called Door Thief, but that cult had been disappeared already. I didn't understand what he was talking about, so I asked him what relation with a cult there. I wanted to ask him out, but he wanted to stop talking. He replied that he might overthink and had talked to me too much. I didn't have to hear those stuff. To be honest, Jackson's supercar was really cool. It just took us two hours to reach my cousin's place. Everyone in the town came out to see the car in admiration. It might be that was their first time seeing a supercar like that. I had heard they have discussed the car. They thought we came to visit my cousin's house at the funeral, and we looked rich. My cousin's granduncle was old, so he could know some wealthy people, obviously. I took Jackson to my cousin's house, I introduced her to Jackson. Jackson was very cold-blooded, he didn't even look at my cousin, but he eyed around the house while he was saying hi to her. He asked her to take him to the funeral house in no time. Jackson and I followed my cousin's lead to the funeral house, where my granduncle's body was placed. We didn't relate that close, but we had a great time in the past. My cousin's granduncle was very nice to me. I had to bowl my head, face down in front of him, and told him that I came to see him the last time. When I bowled my head, I was shocked once seeing my granduncle in the coffin. He was very thin, but at that moment, he was likely to bow in his cheek weirdly. It looked like Jackson had recognized something, but he didn't tell me. He gave a light smile that was so much like Adam when he found out something. After leaving the funeral lobby, Jackson turned to my cousin and asked her to take him to my granduncle's room. She replied a yes and led the way then. She took us to her grandpa's room. Jackson stopped by the door steps. He held the door's lock in his hands, carefully looked at it, then stepped inside the room. My granduncle was a farmer, but there were many picture and calligraphy paintings in his room, antiques around. His room was like a gallery. I heard that he had traded those things when he was alive. Jackson looked at that valuable stuff on the shelves, then asked my cousin why her grandpa got those antiques and what he did for a living in the past. I could understand him at that moment, how a farmer could collect that much valuable stuff. I used to hear my granduncle told me that those antiques were all fake. He had been too passionate to collect antiques as a poor farmer, so collecting fake antiques was his hobby. Jackson looked around one more time, then requested us to set up a meal. He was hungry and would like to grab a bite to eat. Everything would be sorted out that night. I felt that Jackson had an answer already, just like Adam once he got an idea about the case. Then my cousin made us a feast. Don't you think Jackson got a slight stomach because he was skinny, not at all. He ate like a horse and looked very happy with the big meal. After having a feast, Jackson asked my cousin to stay in the room that night, whether she heard or saw anything. After then, Jackson asked me to come after him to the funeral house. Even though my granduncle was lying in the coffin, but once looking at him, I got anxious and a bit frightened. I asked Jackson what we should do next at the funeral lobby. Jackson came closer to the paper mannequin at the funeral lobby, then put his bag to the ground which looked like a tiny coffin but full of tools. I saw there were all kind of knives, pencils, markers, colored pens, along with papers, pastes. They have put in there like a set of treasures. He took out some of the tools and asked me to tear the paper mannequin's face. Since I came after Adam, I always believed everything had a spirit. Even that was just a dummy, I believed there were soul and feeling inside him. I came to the male mannequin, bowled my head, and gave a sorry to the dummy, I was really sorry to tear his face out. I saw Jackson was making a kinda glue. Then he put the glue mixture to the face of the mannequin. Just in a blink of an eye, he made another face for the mannequin. 
The face, skin, nose, and mouth of the paper mannequin gradually showed up under Jackson's hands. After a few draws, the paper mannequin was livingly like a real man and better lots of times than before. After finishing his mannequin's face painting, Jackson gave the paper man's head a red dot in the middle. He turned to me and told me to hide out and wait for the magical things to happen. In my cousin's room, we covered ourselves behind the windows and looked out the yard. I didn't catch it. I asked Jackson to tell me what was going on. Jackson simply answered me that we were waiting for the old man to come out. The more he told me, the more I was getting confused. The old man who? Before he could explain, I saw someone push the door and stepped into the yard. Jackson gave me a sign that the old man had come so that we hid behind the windows hurriedly. I looked out the yard and saw someone come. I had no idea how the man could open the front door and entered the yard. Once I could examine his face clearly, I was surprised that Robert, my granduncle's old good friend, had been very close and together researched about antiques and religions. Robert put a box in the yard and silently came into the house. My granduncle's mate knelt down at the doorstep and started to unlock the door. That was the first time I could see a skillful unlock door as a professional. In no time, he could unlock the door and stepped into the house. I was unable to stand there and stop my mad. It turned out Robert was the one behind everything, they were friends with each other for years. How could the old man play the ghost game with us? I tended to go outside and catch the old man in evidence, but then I saw the box he had put in the middle of the yard started to move. There was something inside the box, and it wanted to go out. I was still confused. Then I heard a funeral house's door started sounding weird. Two hands were reaching out, and the zombie stepped outside. That was my granduncle. He stepped outside of the funeral house as a zombie. He was standing on his toes. He extended his arms and legs, jumped ahead strongly. I was really shocked then. My granduncle had jumped towards my cousin's windows, but in opposite to me, Jackson was really calmed as if everything was in his plan. Jackson took a marker out, put it on his forehead, and lightly nodded his head. There was a red dot in front of his forehead afterward. Then Jackson came to the corner of the room and moved his legs lightly as if he was walking on the spot. I wondered who that guy in front of me was and what he was going to do. Then I saw the paper mannequin in the funeral lobby started to walk just exactly like him. It turned out Jackson was controlling the paper mannequin. The facial expression on the face of the mannequin was really scary and annoying to me. The paper man walked to my granduncle's room, where Robert, the old man was. Once Jackson controlled the paper mannequin stepped into the room. I hear a scream from the room that must have been from Robert. Everyone would scare the shit out when seeing the paper man walked towards at night like that. He tried to escape from the room as quickly as possible. He ran to the gate in no time, but the paper mannequin had chased after him. Once he ran out of the gate, Jackson erased the red dot in his forehead, and as a result, the paper mannequin stopped. So all of the scary things my cousin had experienced, was all from Robert, I tended to run after Robert, but Jackson had detained me. Jackson told me that I shouldn't come after him. Everyone in the town would know. They would come to the house and make everything confuse then. That made so much sense to me, so I had stopped. We left the room and saw my granduncle was jumping on the ground, from this to another side of the windows. I worried asked Jackson, was there no way back for my granduncle, was he going to be a zombie, later on, he would jump around and bite us as what I had seen in the movie. Jackson requested me to open the box which Robert had put on the ground earlier. I had no idea what was inside the box, but I shyly opened the box out. It turned out just a sharp needle was put on the top head of a toad. 
The weird point was the toad got white eyeballs and pop-eyed. The silver needle in the head must have poison. Jackson told me that I had to pull out the needle. I took the silver needle out, and out of the blue, the toad's eyes got back to normal. At that moment, my granduncle had faced up and vomited water out. He fell to the ground and got back to a normal corpse. Jackson and I ran toward my granduncle, took him up. I saw Jackson took another silver needle from his head out. Once the silver needle had been pulled out, another toad from my granduncle's mouth had jumped out, which boiled my stomach and my throat up. I nearly got vomited there. Jackson took my granduncle up and told me everything was fine. He could be brought back to the coffin, and his funeral could be continuing then as usual. After letting my granduncle's dead body back inside the coffin, I was unable to hide my curiosity. So I asked Jackson what the truth was behind everything. His answer to me was like what I had read in the novel. I wouldn't believe it if I didn't eyewitness it. There was really a cult called Door Thief. They had been mainly involved in the robbery. Robert, my granduncle's friend, was one of the members of the cult. He used some magical tricks and made my granduncle move to distract my cousin's attention and easily took his action to steal the antiques. Jackson added that he thought that the cult had been disbanded a long time ago, but he had no idea how a member could be there. He asked me to call my cousin out. I have seen there was a little excitement in his voice. Jackson gathered us to my granduncle's gallery in the bedroom. I wondered what the old man Robert looked for in my granduncle gallery there, as my granduncle's words, they were all fake. But Jackson reassured me that they were all authentic antiques, which made me really surprised. That was unbelievable if the whole antiques there were real, so those must value a fortune. My granduncle was a typical farmer dedicated to his job his whole life, how he could buy that precious stuff. I shouted out, that was no way, how my granduncle had that much money to buy those ancient antiques. But Jackson gave me a proper explanation, I just knew him as a farmer when I was growing up already. I didn't know what he did for a living in the past when I was a child. I heard that he usually went somewhere to make a living, just sometimes at home. So he must have been in the door thief cult as well. So my granduncle and Robert had joined the same cult and became friends. I could understand the whole thing then, but how Robert didn't take anything from the room after those days like that, he probably wanted to find something more valuable. I asked Jackson what he thought about that, what was more valuable than those antiques and made Robert had to make up a big plan like that. Jackson didn't answer me, he turned to my cousin and asked her if my granduncle gifted her anything before he died. As Jackson's guess, my granduncle indeed gifted my cousin one thing. But as our traditional rule, she couldn't wear any jewelry during the funeral, so she had stored it out. Nevertheless, she told us her grandpa had given her a pendant as her dowry. She disappeared from the room and got back with the pendant. That was a wooden pedant looked like a pedal, at first glance, that was not a valuable pedant at all. Jackson took out the wooden pendant and walked around the room to compare it with each antique. Finally, he stopped at a wooden cabinet. The wooden material was alike with the texture in the cabinet. However, a flower in the cabinet was missing a pedal, and the pendant was the missing piece there. Jackson put the pendant to finish the puzzle and pushed, there was a click sound. The wooden pendant was the key to open the secret shelf with a box there. Jackson took out the wooden box from the secret shelf. He eye opened to the box a told us that the thing in the box was very valuable. I stared at it and shouted out that was the most valuable that my granduncle gifted my cousin as a dowry. There was a small calculator in the box made from bloody marble and a little bit of red. With my amateur eyes, I could see that was very precious and must cost a fortune. 
But, no doubts, he hidden it in a secret place like that. Jackson spoke up that his job was done. He was afraid that my cousin could not keep that precious dowry. She better turned it into the government to stay away from danger later on. Jackson handed the marble calculator to my cousin, then said goodbye and left. I hurriedly ran after him outside, just turned to my cousin to ask her to follow Jackson's advice. It would help her stay away from troubles. I would call her once I got home. On the way, I was really regretful that I left my cousin there and got in Jackson's car. Because he asked me to pay the bill. I was playing dumb with him for a sec. I thought Adam's penny had paid the bill already and asked him did the penny had a spiritual mean behind it? I didn't think that kind of situation could happen. Jackson raised his voice to me. The penny stood for a hundred thousand. At that moment, everything was clear to me. I could understand how Jackson and Adam could have a supercar and a super villa. I objected to Jackson 2000. That would be no way, he was robbing me. Jackson replied that he was using his abilities to make money. How could I shout out he was a robber? Afterward, my cousin had handed the bloody marble calculator to the government. I heard about a missing national treasure at Carroll Museum years earlier, and the case didn't solve yet. Regarding how my cousin got it and if my granduncle bought or was involved in the case, no one asked after. There was only me who had to suffer because Jackson had asked me for payment.